volunteer welcome. Woo! Ah, shit, thank you! All right, yeah. Hey, give it up for Kay and Jordan and everybody uh, who organized this tonight. Give it up for Sajak Nim here at Commune, which is the old 55 of Daegu, I guess. And, and Daegu, this crowd, you guys have listened all night and been really nice and totally fucking awesome, so thank you for that. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to read a piece. This is, I wrote this years ago. It's appeared here and there. Uh, it's called The Road to Crutchy. It's about um, some indigestional issues in Southeast Asia. <laughs> I shouldn't have eaten the curry. I should have just let it be. It was nasty stuff, putrid, watery, and unnaturally green, like some sort of chunky algae bloom. The chicken was undercooked and shards of stringy bamboo floated in the swamp of a sauce. I should have taken the whole thing out back behind the fetid shack containing the joint kitchen and poured it onto the ground for the village's free roaming pigs to slop up. I should have just gone to bed unfed and hungry. After all, the human body can go for weeks without any food at all. What was one night? I'd be fine. Despite some lean times in the past, my pampered American ass had never known any real prolonged hunger, yet 10 hours without a bite in my body was in panic mode. I was ravenous and that was that, so I sucked down every last oily drop. It was now two days later and my intestinal tract was in a state of civil war. I was nauseous and fevered, and the spigot had opened wide. Hot blasts, explosive, violent, and unpredictable, rumbled forth in unstoppable volleys from deep within my bowels. I was sweaty, weak, unshaven, and filthy. I had been wearing the same pair of olive shorts and faded green Seattle Supersonics t-shirt for over a week now ever since my backpack containing the rest of my clothes along with $300 cash had disappeared from the belly of a long distance bus. My one pair of underwear had since been abandoned in the guest house trash bin. I was in a state for all of her tropical emerald splendors. Laos, Southeast Asia's sleepiest country, had treated me roughly. It was time to get the hell out so I boarded a white minibus that trundled across the border into the realm of her little tough sister, Cambodia. The road south was a moonscape of craters and potholes punctuated by large loose stones. The going was slow and bumpy, constantly rocking and jostling the poor bus's chassis, not to mention its unfortunate chassis or, or cargo of passengers. I settled into the seat and gripped tightly, shuddering with each groan of the vehicle's frame. Every crevasse in the road sent shock waves through my ravaged body and agitated the liquids within. I then felt the furnace ignite. Old Faithful was ready to blow, but alas, there was no toilet, no bucket, Nothing on this dwarf of a bus. I just have to ride it out. So I locked my jaw and endured each bump in grim silence, focusing my thoughts into the one mantra that echoed throughout my being over the next two hours of rutted road hell. Keep it clenched. 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 The need to release came in waves which prompted all the muscles in my body, not just those at the gate, to flex and tighten as I staved off the overwhelming pressure. The old bus shook and shuddered as it groaned down the calamity of a road while I just concentrated on breathing and keeping the gasket sealed. It took every reserve of willpower and discipline, but I eventually managed to gain control. I only hope, not just for my sake, but also for the, of my fellow passengers that I could maintain this upper hand because the alternative would be catastrophic. <laughs> we rolled down the dusty track, 
through desiccated rice fields. It was the middle of the dry season and the lush Cambodian countryside was now painted in shades of brown. The air was gray and hazy from farmers slash burning their fields. Buffaloes stood in the dusty paddies, some tied to posts stupidly staring as we passed by. At one point we reached a small settlement. The bus pulled off to the side and stopped and the driver opened the door. Salvation. I grabbed my small green bag containing my valuables, the only thing that hadn't walked away during that fateful journey in Laos and made my way off the vehicle. We had stopped in front of an open air wooden shack selling some bottled water, canned drinks, cigarettes, bags of chips and cookies, as well as other snacks. I guess this is what passed for a uh, truck stop in Cambodia. We were suddenly set upon by four teenage girls uh, selling like baskets of white boiled eggs which they held on their heads and they quickly brought down for our perusal. You buy? You buy? You buy? You buy? They pleaded in a sing-song chorus. I ducked away, weighed down by more immediate and pressing thoughts. I looked to the main man sitting behind the drinks table. He wore shorts and sandals and puffed away on a cigarette. He stared back with bloodshot indifference. Toilet, toilet, to toilet, I pleaded. He pointed to a cardboard sign tacked on a support beam near his head. It read WC, followed by a crudely drawn arrow pointing to the left. Thanks, I nodded, thanks, and headed off. No, 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 no! The man was on his feet as I turned back. He held out his palm and slapped it with his other hand. Of course, there is no such thing as a free shit in Southeast Asia. You gotta pay to spray. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. How much, how much, I hissed. He jerked his finger back towards the sign. I had missed the fine print scrawled underneath. 1,000 riel. I took out my wallet and peered inside. I had a small wad of Lao Kip and some US dollars, but no Cambodian riel. I had neglected to convert any cash at the border. His eyes bulged from his sockets as he growled again for money. Uh, uh, Lao Kip, Lao Kip, Lao Kip, I asked. No, 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 no. He waved the bills away. Uh, 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 dollars? American dollars? Dollar, yes, dollar, yes. His hand became possessed with a renewed vigor. I fingered through my greenbacks looking for a dollar bill. Okay, 20, 20, 20, no, 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 20, no, 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 10, 10, 10, no, shit, 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 please, please, okay, okay, one dollar, I got it, I got it. I handed him the wrinkled note and he made change, returning a crumpled fistful of nearly worthless riel. I fled without a thanks and headed towards the toilet feeling a steamy gurgling inside. It was on. Another sign directed me around the side of the building where things got very muddy. I slogged towards the rickety outstructure on which a WC sign had been nailed, taking care not to step in the moist, treacherous bits. Scrawny chickens clucked, scratched, and pecked at the edge of the muck while the terrorized offspring scurried and screeched at the side of me. A fat black pig grunted just feet away. Clumps of its dark shit punctuated the even darker mud. When I finally reached the haven of the lone toilet stall, I grabbed the crude wooden handle and gave the door a yank. It moved a half an inch and stopped. It was latched from the inside. Sake. I mumbled, <laughs> squeezing my ass cheeks together with the strength of an Olympic wrestler. I shuffled my way to look to the smoky sky. Please, 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 please. My eyes went blank to the door in a search for movement. Nothing. Okay, okay, no problem. I figured that another one of the bus's passengers must be inside, so it couldn't take too long, could it? But we were in Cambodia. I drummed on my thighs and rocked into place and waited for him or her to emerge. Come on, 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 come on. No one emerged. 
my patience exhausted, I knocked on the door. Hello? Hello? I can hear some shuffling inside, followed by an audible but intellig unintelligible response. Hello? Hello? There was movement. Please, it's an emergency. Hello? More movement. I knocked again. This was met with a garbled deal. <laughs> Causing me to step away. I stood in agony for two or three minutes more. I sighed and grabbed my hair. I growled deep in my throat. I moaned and spit. I looked at the static door and imagined laser beams shooting forth from my eyes, turning the thing into ash in a matter of seconds. Jesus, cunt in Christ. I approached once more and slammed with an open palm. Hey! 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 Again, I was met with a human voice, but again, I couldn't make out what it was saying. Was it even language? It sounded more like a kind of groaning. Whoever was in there was my only hope. I banged again harder. Open the fuck up! Ah! Nothing. I waited for another minute or two. The situation was now untenable. It couldn't go on any longer. I looked down at my feet at the wet earth. Surely I could just squat right there and release the boiling contents of my bowels onto this already filthy mud. It must have been done many times before. Fuck it. I thumbed the loop of my belt. I began to yank it out of the buckle, only to be startled by a prolonged loud ah, ah. It was the minibus. I looked over to the side of the road. The little white bus had begun to pull out, and the driver, along with all the passengers, was looking my way. Ah, ah. He angrily waved me to come on board. I was holding the bus up. No, 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 no. Ah. I slunk back onto the bus, defeated, demoralized, and ready to murder. I had yet to unleash the volcano simmering in the tubes of my ass. And it was another two hours rugged ride to our destination. I gingerly sat back down on my feet and cursed our animal state. Why is so much of life dictated by base physical needs? Eating, breathing, fucking, itching, hurting, pissing, and shitting. All of these things form a kind of tyranny then none of us can escape. And I was now locked away in its harshest gulag. As the bus began to pull out of the road, I threw my gaze one last time towards the rickety outhouse. The door suddenly burst open and out staggered a man, a wretched, ugly man, steeping in obscene amounts of booze or worse. He was heinously dirty and clothed in greasy, stained rags, his hair was long and matted and wild with a wispy beard springing out haphazardly from his chin. His eyes were empty black holes and he swayed from side to side in a half-assed attempt to stay upright. The guy probably didn't knew, know what country he was in, let alone village or toilet, and he had the appearance of someone in the wicked throes of a six-day gas huffing binge. Who knows? Maybe that's what he was doing in the outhouse. <laughs> Whatever the case, I was shit out of luck. Thank you. <laughs>